Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 10 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video, we'll take our first look at some of the audio editing tools in Logic, including the pointer tool, the marquee tool, and the scissors tool. We'll also take a look at some of the secondary functions of these tools, and even if you're already familiar with Logic, you may not know these secondary functions yet. For all the examples in this video, I have my snap mode set to bar, and although we haven't really gone in depth about the snap modes yet, we will eventually. So just know that with our snap mode set to bar, all of the edits that we make will snap to the bar lines of our grid. So next, let's go over how to select your edit tools. And uh, essentially, by default, there are two tools that you can select at any given time, one on the left and one on the right here. The one on the left is your regular old left click tool, so that's just your regular click tool. And the one on the right is your command click tool, which means that you have to hold down command in order for this tool to work. So you can essentially toggle back and forth between two tools at any given time. However, there is a third tool you can add. If you go to Logic Pro Preferences General and then find the editing tab, uh, under the editing tab, you can actually add a right click tool. So you'll see that there's an option here that says uh, right mouse button. And by default, it opens the shortcut menu. We can change this to say is assignable to a tool. So when you choose this, you'll actually end up having a left click tool, a command click tool, and then also a right click tool. So you can use three of them at the same time. However, I don't usually use this option because uh, the pointer tool can actually has multiple tools embedded into it. There's some secondary functions uh, that really turn it into a multi-tool. And I'd rather be able to open up my shortcuts menu with right click anyway. So let's select our pointer tool for our left click tool. And the pointer tool is essentially your main, uh, your main tool. It's the main tool that comes up by default. Uh, if you're Pro Tools savvy, this is essentially your uh, grabber tool. Uh, so its main function is you can grab regions and you can move them around. But there's a whole plethora of other secondary functions that we can do with it. And then my command click tool, I'm going to grab my marquee tool, which again, if you're Pro Tools savvy, is a lot like your selector tool or your selection tool. So what you can do with this is you can select uh, a selection of a region. Uh, you can delete it and you can also pull that selection out of the region as a separate region. So it also has the secondary function of being able to separate a region. So let's start with the pointer tool. And again, its basic function is a grabber function or a time shift function, whatever you want to call it. So you can move a region around. And because we're in bar mode, it'll snap to the bars on the grid. A secondary function is you can actually trim with it. As I showed in a previous video, you can hover over the lower left or lower right corner of a region and you can trim that audio. Another secondary function of the pointer tool is that it's also a loop tool. If you hover over the upper right corner of a region, you can loop out that region and make copies of it. But keep in mind, this is a loop copy, not a real copy. So any changes you make to the original will also affect the subsequent loops. If you want to make real copies of a region, there's essentially two ways you can do this with the pointer tool. The first way is to just uh, click on a region and uh, hit Command C to copy it. And then set your playhead where you want the uh, copy to be. And then make sure that the target track is selected and hit Command V to paste as many copies as you like. The second way to do this is to use Option as a modifier key. So you click and drag on the uh, region while holding Option to make a duplicate of it. You just have to make sure that you let go of the mouse before you let go of Option for this to work. Another secondary function in the pointer tool is to apply TCE, or Time Compression Expansion, to a region. So what you can do with this is you hover over the lower right or left corner of a region like we would normally to trim, but instead of trimming, you hold Option, and what you can do is you can stretch or compress the region. So what I've done here is I've taken a four bar uh, drum pattern and I've stretched it out to eight bars. So essentially this is gonna play back two times slower than it normally would. And you have to be careful how much you stretch the audio because the more you stretch it, the more you're degrading the quality of the audio. And we'll find in a later video when we start working with flex time that flex time can actually produce a better, uh, higher quality result than using this TCE tool. Now the pointer tool actually has a secondary function which acts a lot like the fade tool. And although there is a dedicated fade tool, um, it's actually quicker to just use the, the pointer tool. 
So the way you make the pointer tool fade is you hold shift and control while dragging within the region outside of the region, just like I did here. And you can also adjust the curve of the fade by holding shift and control and dragging left or dragging right. So you can create uh, logarithmic shapes as well as exponential shapes. While holding shift and control, you can also adjust the size of the fade. And here's just a better view of adjusting the curve. All right, so that about wraps it up for the pointer tool. Uh, let's get rid of these fades here and uh, move on to the marquee tool. Now the marquee tool, uh, like I said before, is essentially a selector tool or a selection tool. And also just as a reminder, I have the marquee tool in my command click tool. So whenever I use it, I'm gonna have to hold down command uh, to toggle to it. So let's say for example, I wanted to delete half of my drum pattern here. If you drag over it with the marquee tool, it selects it, and then you can just hit delete on your keyboard, and it will delete that selection. Another function of the marquee tool is that it can function like a separation tool. So if I select a, a range of my guitar part here, then click on it with the pointer tool, it'll actually separate the, that region into two separate regions. And if I select a range within the region, you can actually do the same thing. Just drag over it and then click on it with the pointer tool. And now it's separated at two different points. So now I can just pull this two measure selection out of the region. So one use of the marquee tool is to take a uh, eight bar phrase like this, separate it into uh, smaller two bar phrases, and then you can go and reorder those phrases and then see what the music sounds like in a different order. So what I'll do is I'll hit Command Z a few times to undo those edits I just made. And let's listen to what the original sounds like and then we'll compare that to the edited version. All right, so that's the original version. Uh, let's go ahead and use our marquee tool again to separate this into two bar clips and then we'll reorder them. So I'm gonna reorder the uh, guitar part here in red. And by the way, this also works for MIDI as well. So my MIDI bass down here, I can do the exact same thing. I can separate the clips and then I can go ahead and reorder them. Just make sure that you quantize your MIDI data and then also make sure that there's no overlapping notes at the separation point because otherwise you might accidentally separate your MIDI notes. So here's the edited version. All right, so that's the marquee tool. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command Z a bunch of times to undo and get back to uh, the original recording again. And the reason why I'm doing this is there's actually another way that we can make this happen uh, by using the scissors tool instead of the marquee tool. Um, the scissors tool, are sent, they're essentially a separation tool and they also follow the grid. So uh, wherever I uh, choose to snip the region, uh, it'll be based on what my snap mode was. So if I click right here, it's going to separate at measure four, measure six, and measure eight. Then we could go ahead and reorder those again like we did before. There's also a secondary function in the scissors tool where if you hold option, you can cut things in a sequence or you can separate things in a sequence. So if I separate here at measure three, um, ever, the entire region will be separated into one bar uh, chunks. Uh, so it's based on the length of the first slice that you made. So if I want to make this two bar chunks, I'm going to separate here at measure four, again holding option, and it'll separate at four, six, and eight. So that's a cool little trick you can do to save some time. Now, if you're new to Logic and you're coming from the Pro Tools world, you know that in Pro Tools, there's a special tool called the Smart Tool, which essentially lets you use the grabber function, the selector function, and the fade function simultaneously. Uh, this function's actually been added to Lo uh, Logic 10, and it wasn't available uh, previously in Logic 9. So the way you turn this on is you go up to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, General. We'll stay under the Editing tab we looked at earlier. 
And then down here, there's a option that says pointer tool in tracks provides. And there's two checkboxes, fade tool click zones and marquee tool click zones. And what these do is they set up your regions to act a lot like the smart tool from Pro Tools. So what this does is when you hover over the upper part of a waveform, you get the pointer tool. But when you hover over the lower part of the waveform, you'll actually get the marquee tool. So you can select the track and you can uh, grab the track. Now where the fade function comes in is where you hover over the left or right boundary of the region. So here if I hover the right boundary of the region, it forms a fade tool. And then toward the bottom, the trim tool is still here. So if we just hover over the left side and drag to the right, it'll create a fade for us. And then we can do the same thing on the right side. The fade tool is here. Uh, as we go down toward the middle, though, you'll see that the loop tool is still here, so we don't lose that. And to create a fade, we just drag from the right to the left now. And you can also adjust the curve just like we did before. All right, so that about wraps up the video. In the next episode, we'll take a look at all of the other edit tools that we didn't take a look at in this video. Just keep in mind that the pointer tool, marquee tool, and scissors tool, as well as the, the fade tool, are basically the main four tools you're going to be using for audio editing. And most of the other edit tools actually serve really minor functions. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks again for watching.